Hey there, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we're going to be using the Google OAuth and Google Drive API in React to create a project that allows us to instantly make Google documents. So as you'll see here, I can log into a Google account. Google OAuth then recognizes me as a user. And since I have the Google Documents API set up, I can press these buttons, which then do API calls in the background to create Google Documents on the fly. So I created this project because I have all these different classes for college, for example. And if I want to make, let's say, Math 216 notes in my Google Docs, an easy way to organize that would to be, you know, make a title like this, where it shows the time and it shows the date and, you know, all the information around it. And I kind of wanted to automate that process so I don't have to do that every single time. Let's get into how we can create this application. Creating this application starts with creating a React website that has Google OAuth 2.0 login and logout buttons. So Google makes this process really easy, but specifically for React, there are some JavaScript things that I've ran into myself. So hopefully I can show you guys how to make that super easily. And then also buttons to create the new documents like I was showing you guys before. And just to explain the issue again, so if I have a class, let's say Computer Science 223, I can click on the Computer Science 223 button to make a document for that class specifically. So let's take a look at the, how that would work. When the button is clicked, we can ask the docs API to create a document and name the document CPTS 223 notes with the date and time. Then we go to the Google docs API and use the docs.create document. I believe it's like docs.create, but it's still the same idea. And then we wait for that document to get created. Once we have this CPTS 223 notes document that got created from the Google docs API, we can redirect the user to the Google docs page with the document ID. All right, let's recap this. There's a simple three-step process we can kind of think about. The user presses the Create CPTS 223 Notes button. We call the Google Docs API to create the document, and then we redirect the user to the new document after it's been created. Before getting started with any code though, let's hop over to the Google Developer Console so we can set up all the Google-related things necessary for our OAuth. All right, so go to console.cloud.google.com. This is the Google Developer Console, so anything to do with Google APIs, Google Cloud Platform Services, anything like that, it's going to be handled here. First, we're going to start by pressing Select a Project on top left. Then we're going to press New Project in the top right of this thing and give the project name something relevant to what you're doing. For example, I'll say Google Auth Video, and you don't really need an organization, so don't worry about that, and press Create. All right, so now we can press Select Project on this notification. Another way to get here is just by pressing the Home button over here. From here, you're gonna to wanna to look up APIs above and then press APIs and services. This is going to allow you to enable different services for your Google Cloud project. So we can say enable APIs and services by pressing this button here. And it's gonna pretty much give you a search bar where you can look up any Google related API you want. For our project, we're gonna use a Google Documents API. So if we look up documents, it'll show up at the top. Then you're gonna to wanna to press enable for the API. The next most important step is going to the OAuth consent screen. So what the OAuth consent screen is, is pretty much when you try to log into a Google project, for example, a little pop-up is going to show up saying, hey, this project wants to access the Google Drive API, or this project wants to access your Gmail emails. It's pretty much a screen that shows up to a user saying, hey, log in with your Google account here, and this is what they want. So for now, where our user type is going to be external, so you can just press this and then press create. From here, we can make the app name whatever we want. I'm going to say Google Auth video project, then I'm just going to make the support email, whatever email I'm currently on. And I'm also going to make the developer thing the same deal, whatever email I'm currently on. And it's pretty simple here. All you have to do is name the project, put your two emails in, and then press save and continue. All right, so now you're going to want to add or remove scopes. So scopes are pretty much saying, hey, what APIs does your project need to use? So when you press add or remove scopes, you'll see all these different types of scopes. You'll see like Google Data Store, Google Cloud Storage. And since we enabled Google Docs, for example, we have all the different Google Docs APIs over here. So as you can see, the user facing description is if a user saw this in the consent screen, what would happen is it would say, hey, this application wants to see, edit, create, and delete all of your Google Docs documents. So that's kind of the basic idea of understanding these things. Just to be safe, I'm gonna enable all the different Google Docs APIs for my project, just so we have access to them. But in production, you're really only gonna to want to use the Google Docs APIs that your project actually uses. So once you have all your APIs selected, then you can press update down here. And now it's going to pretty much show all the different scopes that your application wants to access. Once you're done there, you can press save and continue at the bottom. And then you wanna do test users. So test users are incredibly important because when you're testing, it's not gonna let anyone log in besides these users. And so you're gonna to wanna to press add users and then pretty much add emails that you're gonna use for testing. I have an account I already know, and so I'm gonna just put that email in, then I'm gonna press add, 
Now, when I try and log in with this email, it will say, you're good to go. If I try and log in with anything else, it's gonna give me an error and it's gonna say, nope, you're not, you're not allowed to test this application. All right, now press save and continue once you have your emails in there. Okay, and then this pretty much is a basic summary and we are good to go. We can go back to our dashboard. And so now when you have go back to OAuth consent screen, it should look something like this, which is super great. So now we want to create the credentials for our application. We can do that by pressing credentials right here. And so we can press plus create credentials right here to get started. And what we're going to want to create is an OAuth client ID. So pretty much this is something that says, okay, where are your requests going to come from, for example? So we have to say in here, okay, we are going to use a web application for this project because we're using React. And so inside of this, it says, okay, what are your authorized JavaScript origins? We want to say something like this, HTTP localhost 3000, because that is where we're going to be testing locally on our React. If you're using localhost port 3001, Make sure it's 3001, but the default for React is 3000, so I'm going to keep it there. Just to make sure the redirect URLs, we can do the exact same thing and do localhost 3000. This is pretty much saying, hey, if we get a login request that comes from localhost 3000, recognize that that's a good request for this project and that localhost 3000 request is good. Because if requests come from other areas, Google doesn't like that. So it really needs to make sure that you have the correct URIs here. All right, now we can just press create on the bottom to make our web client. And so now we have this client ID and the client secret. Make sure you save these because these are super important and they're gonna be used when you try and access the API. So now your web client is created. The last thing we have to do is create credentials and grab an API key for the Google Documents API. We can do this by pressing create credentials and then press API key. All right, and now you're good to go. So make sure you save this API key somewhere safe. We're gonna use it later, of course. All right, now we can get into actually creating our application. Okay, so make a folder for our React project to live in. I made this important stuff.txt just to you know handle all these important variables we're going to need later. So make sure you have a client ID, a client secret, and the API key they showed up earlier in the video. And so yeah, let's create our React application by doing the simple npx create-react-app, and then the name of the application. I'm just gonna name it client to be simple. Now that that's done, you should have a client folder with all the expected React stuff in there. Let's go into our terminal and go cd into client. We're going to need to npm install a couple things here. The first thing we need to install is do npm install and it's gapi script. This is the Google API script that allows us to kind of access the Google API object. I'll talk about more in the video here. And then react google Login is the other thing. So React Google Login gives us some pre-made login and logout buttons specifically for React that make the authentication process super simple. All right, so let's NPM start just to see what our project currently looks like. All right, so as expected, we have the basic React template showing here. We don't really need this base layer information, so we can go into our app.js under the source folder and then pretty much delete the entire header is what I usually do for almost all my videos because you don't need the boilerplate stuff. So if we go back to our application, it should be entirely blank now, which is what we'd expect. Now we're gonna get started on the Google OAuth 2.0 authentication. So under our source folder, we can make a components folder. And I'm making a components folder because we are going to be creating two different components. The first one is login.js. And so you can make these files now if you like. You can make login.js and then logout.js. So these are the two buttons that are gonna handle the login and the logout. All right, so let's get started creating the login part. First thing we're gonna do is import React from React. The next thing we're gonna do is say import the Google login button from the package we installed earlier. So react-google-login. Then we're gonna need our client ID for pretty much saying, hey, when we log in with this button above, we needed to log in to a certain client. And so that's where the client ID comes into play. And so let's save that as a string here. You can go to wherever you save that copy it over. Now let's create the functional component itself. So let's just say login. And if we get this out of the way now, we can do export default login, which is pretty much saying export this login functional component. So we can use it in other areas like our app.js. And so now we can focus on what our login component is going to return. It's gonna be a div that I'm going to give an ID. And then the div itself is just gonna use this Google login component itself. So there's documentation behind the actual Google login component, but I'll show you guys what you're going to need. First thing is you're gonna need the client ID property to be set equal to that client ID you made above. You're gonna have some button text that we can just make login for now. Then we're gonna have an on success, which is a property there. 
and we're going to have it point to an on success function we're going to create ourselves when the button succeeds or fails for example on failure as well it's going to reference these functions we are going to make so on success right here and on failure are functions we are going to create in a second then we're going to do a little cookie policy this is just in the documentation of the button and it says single host origin itself is usually what's expected also part of the documentation that I'm not quite sure is here, but they pretty much have is signed in is equal to true initially. And so those are all the properties that this Google login button needs. Now we can get started creating the on success and on failure functions. One of the first things we can say is const on success is equal to the response. And we're going to say console.log login success, which pretty much means when the on success gets, you know, hit that if it gets hit, that means the Google login button said, all right, we're good to go. And so now we can say current user is equal to this. Uh, I'm just going to say res.profile object. This is just because I know what this response thing is. But if you didn't know what the response properties were, is you could either look at the documentation itself, or you could always just console.log res is a great way to debug these pretty fast. Now we're going to create a very similar thing for the on failure. So we can literally copy this entire function, say on failure. Now we can change the message to something like login failed. And we can just show the entire response to our person here or whoever is looking at this so we can get a good idea of what actually happened in the failure. All right, so now our login button's fully made. We have on success and on failure both calling things. And pretty much if the user logs in, it'll say login success. If the login failed, it'll show that failed response. All right, so let's copy these first three lines of code here and bring them over to our logout.js because you guys will see logout is actually the easy part. So we're actually done with the harder part. So from here, we have to change the Google login, which is that login component to now get the Google logout component, which is another thing supplied to us by React Google login. So as you'll see, this package is super helpful. Now we can go in here, make the function logout, and let's do the same thing by pretty much returning a div where the ID is equal to sign out button. Now we can go in here and pretty much say, okay, use that Google logout component that we got from above. And it's only going to have three different properties. The first one is that client ID, which as you guys will see is super crucial in a lot of these different things. Now we're going to have the button text, which I'm going to set equal to a string called logout. And then this one's kind of weird, but pretty much on logout success is the property they use. And we can call an on success function. Now we actually have to create that on success function. So let's go up here and say const on success is equal to in the documentation, they didn't use a response here. So I kind of just followed suit on that because all you really have to say now is okay, the logout is successful. And you kind of have to trust that the React Google login uh, library is doing its job because a lot of this authentication is kind of happening in the background is like it's something I haven't really brought light to. It's almost, you know, magical how the Google API works where now that we have this login and logout and a lot of the more complicated authentication logics happening behind these Google logout and these Google login components, we now have a full authentication system on our application. So now we can get started setting up our app.js. So bring that const client ID string over. Uh, I'm going to change the naming convention just because we're in the main app.js here to client underscore ID. I probably could have done this before, but eh, it's too bad. Now we're also going to want to save the API key, which is super important. So wherever you saved your API key, you want to go there, copy the API key, bring it over to your app.js and then make it a string. And then another important thing, which is kind of going to help us out in a part I haven't explained yet is something called scopes. It's pretty much saying, okay, what APIs is this application trying to access? What should we authorize it for? An important thing for our application would be this drive scope. And so we can pretty much put the screen string here saying, hey, in the scope of this application, we want to use anything related to Google Drive. Uh, to clear up any confusion between Drive and Documents, the Documents API stuff I want to use pretty much says this. If you have Google Drive authentication, you can create documents. If you have Google Docs authentication, you can also create documents. A lot of different things in Google's APIs are like that. A great example of this in actual documentation is look at this Google Docs create that we're going to be using eventually. It says, hey, look at these OAuth scopes. And if you have any of these, for example, if you have the documents one, or if you have the drive one or the drive.file one, you can pretty much use documents.create, which is the method that is being shown here. So this is just a great example of showing you how that actually works from Google side. So at the top of our application, we can import that login button we created 
from dot slash components slash login. And then we can also import that log out button. So you can pretty much copy that line over, do log out instead here. And now you have access to those two things. The next thing we're gonna need is an import statement grabbing that G API. So this is the Google API script. The thing with the Google API is that it has a client overall, kind of like something that's running on top of your React application. And since that client exists, we have to initialize that client whenever our application starts. And so one way we can do that using functional components is bringing in use effect. So we have to go from the top here and you pretty much have to say import React comma, then use effect as well is another important part of this thing here. And what use effect is going to allow us to do is when the application starts, we want a certain start function to run and use effect is what helps us do that. So we can do a little arrow syntax here to pretty much create our use effect hook. And now we're going to create the function that starts our Google API client. So in this start function, we're going to start using that G API object I discussed earlier. So we're going to say G API dot client, that client I was discussing and then in it. So initializing the client, when you initialize your client, it needs a couple of things. One property it needs is an API key, which we saved in our API key const above. And it also needs a client ID, which we conveniently saved. As you guys see, I did this a certain way on purpose. And then we also need a scope, which we can reference by saying scopes, that const we made above. And this function is pretty simple. This is all you really need here. Now, the super important part of this use effect is this. We can go down and say gapi.load. Then we're going to say client and then auth2. And so, you know, everyone says Google OAuth2. Oh, it's so complicated, but literally it's just the same load. And then you say auth2. So don't get too worried, guys. <laughs> and then we're also going to want to pass in a function, which is that start function that we just created. Now, when our React application gets started up, it initializes a Google API client with our API key, our client ID, and the current scopes. And this is super important. It pretty much gives a client for our login and our log out buttons to look at. So when a person logs in, for example, they're going to log in and it's looking at the same client on a React application. So when they log in, it says, okay, we're on this client and we are logged in on this client. All right, so now let's bring in our login and our log out buttons to our front end. So we already have these here. We can just say login button and then log out button. Pretty simple. And so let's npm start here and see our application so far. One quick error to fix is on the logout, I forgot to say export default logout. So put that in there and then your application should run. All right, so this is great. It looks kind of clunky for now, but if you inspect element, we should be able to see some console logs when we log in, for example. So we can say log in and make sure to go to the email that is your test account. For example, I made it this one. And so it's gonna say Google hasn't verified this app, which is even gonna happen for test accounts as well. You're gonna wanna press this continue on the left. Then it's gonna say, okay, this person wants to see, edit, create, and delete all of your Google Drive files. Sounds pretty serious, but let's let him do that. All right, and so what you should be seeing here, which is super great news, is login success, and then it shows the current user, and even that, you know, resulting object, which is super great news. This pretty much shows that our login and logout authentication system works. The only thing we have to test now is the logout button, so press that, and it should say logout successful. And then we can log in again if we wanted to, and Google actually recognizes that we're already logged in, which is super cool. So we don't have to do the extra, or we already have logged in. So we don't have to do the extra Google Drive steps again, which is pretty neat that Google's added that functionality. So let's go back to our app.js and we're going to pretty much create a simple button. This button is going to pretty much be the button that we click to create the Google document file. So we can say on click, uh, make a little arrow function and set it to a create file function that we are going to create. And I'm just gonna say for now, we wanna create a file with a CPTS 223 tag, for example. Um, and I'm just gonna say create CPTS 223 notes for the button. And it's gonna give us an error here because we don't have create file quite done yet, or it's not a function yet. And so I'm just going to add it in here, create file, give it the tag parameter, and now we should be good to go. And so if we go back to our website, you'll see create CPTS 223 notes. And so this is good just because let's do a very simple, you know, console.log over here. Hello world. Whenever this gets called, we can press this and it's going to say hello world. Eventually, we want to do more complicated things like create a Google Drive document. We can start the creation of the file by pretty much getting the access token that the user has. So we can save this in a variable called access token. 
And what's pretty much happening is when the G API, like the Google API client gets authenticated, like a user logs in, an access token is kind of attached to the current user, if that makes sense. Like the current person, whoever's logged in, a access token gets kind of cached on the user side, if that makes sense. And so to get that cache token, we can say gapi.auth.gettoken.access underscore token. And this access token is the perfect thing we need to actually make a Google API request for a certain user. So from here, it's just the actual API call. So it's going to be a fetch and I'm just going to copy in this link. It's going to be a fetch to the V1 Google APIs. So that pretty much Google Docs V1 is what I'm using. And then it's going to have a method of post. And then we're going to have some headers in there as well. And we're going to use a headers object. And we're going to say, all right, authorization. And this header is super important because as you'll see authorization, it's going to say bearer, which is very common kind of token syntax. And then we're going to add the access token to it. And in the Google API itself or in the Google API documentation, it's expecting this authorization to be in a very certain format. So make sure this is just one space and make sure your access token is on the right and that bearer is on the left. And so this is a promise. And so we can use a then statement to get the result of the promise here. Oh, and then this should be an arrow function. So we need the results like this. Then we're going to return the results into a JSON, which makes it more easy to use than the next dot then statement. And so we can take this uh, function, get that value from it. And now we're going to have this response from our actual API call. And so in this response, we can say something like console.log val just to see what's happening. But this value is going to have a bunch of different things. For example, we're going to have something like console.log val.documentID. And this is pretty much saying, okay, when we post to the Google API and we go to this documents thing under this certain user's access token, we are pretty much saying, hey, create a document under the Google documents. Right now it's gonna have no title, it's gonna have nothing, so we haven't done anything specific to it. It's just gonna make a blank document for a certain user. And in the documentation, that's what it says. If you post to this API endpoint, that's what's gonna happen. And so it's gonna give us that response of pretty much saying, here is a document, the blank document that's been created. And so now that we have a button that actually can call this create file function, we can go into our React application and see this working. Also, super cool thing is I don't have to log in every single time. Even when I refresh my React page, it's gonna say login success current user because Google kind of has my login cached, if that makes sense. And that's something that the Google stuff does. I didn't make that myself, so it's super cool. All right, so now if we press this create CPTS 223 notes thing, it's going to show us, look at this. This is an untitled document that was been created by the actual API call itself. And so if we go to this document ID under the uh, account I'm logged in under, so as you guys can see, the Google API just created an untitled document for the account I'm logged in under, which is super cool. It's pretty much showing that the full authentication is working even with API calls. So this is more of a React and Google API tutorial. So I'm gonna copy over some functions that are gonna help us get the current time from our client. So pretty much all you guys have to know what's happening here is we have a get date string, which is gonna get us the date and then a get time string. And so this is going to help us create a unique name for our document. So it's not just untitled document. So I can go in here and let's create a file name. So I can say, okay, file name is equal to the tag above. Then I'm going to add notes. So like CPTS 223 space notes. And then I'm going to say get date string. And this is a great example of how you can use helper functions in your React code. You know, React is just JavaScript. So if you need to make functions, go ahead. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get the date string. And I'm also going to get the time string. Just to go over what these functions do really quick is it uses the JavaScript date object, which already has a bunch of built-in functions. And so it just does some very basic date object stuff. Feel free to copy these, pause the video here if you like. And so now we've pretty much created a full file name. There are better ways to do this, I believe. And if you look into the fetch API, you can look at like URL parameters or something along those lines. But Google allows us to do this. It's expecting a title parameter in the URL. So what you can do is you can say question mark title is equal to, and then we can add our file name to this string. So this is kind of a strange way of doing it, but this is also what Google's expecting. And so I wouldn't say this is terrible practice because we only have one parameter. It kind of makes things simpler. And it's kind of easy to tell what's going on is saying for this link, make the variable title equal to this string we've created here. Whenever we make a call to the Google Docs create document 
API. It's now saying, hey, create a document, but also use this title variable to change the name of the document we're trying to create. So if we go back to our React application and let's just refresh, I'm going to log me in again, just to explain that it's cache that I existed before. So it's logging me in again. And if I create my computer science 223 notes again, all right, we can go to my drive and you can now see a more complicated name has been created, which is super cool. So it has the current date and it also has the current time. And so that's pretty interesting stuff. Now I can pretty much automate the process of creating Google Documents and show the current date and the current time if I want to take notes for a certain class, for example. A super cool thing we can do is once we reach this part of the then statements, so the very last then statement, we know that our document has been fully created. We can do some pretty cool JavaScript to make the new document that's been created open up in a new page. And so we can use the window object here and say dot open to do just exactly that. I'm going to copy over this string, but just to explain this really quick to you guys, it is saying window dot open this document and then say the value of the document id and so this document id is that thing that was in our console for a while let's see here it's uh, the thing that's right here and this is an actual document id if i go over to these notes that were created before you'll see there's this huge string here and that's the exact same document id and so you can use that logic to pretty much say hey open up that newly created document and this slash edit at the end is so it's opened up in edit and then underscore blank is pretty much saying open this up in the next tab. And so this window.open stuff is pretty cool. It's going to allow us to pretty much open this newly created document instantly for the person, which is super nice. So now if we go over to our React application and then we press create CPTS 223 notes, when it's done, it's going to create those newly created notes in our new tab. To kind of finish this project up, we can go back to app.js and then create a couple other buttons for some other classes philosophy 201 for example computer science 360 and now as you guys will see we are going to create tags because remember this parameter right here is the tag of the file we can create tags that are unique to certain classes and so if we go back to our react application if we press on the create philosophy 201 notes it's now going to create a google doc that says philosophy 201 if we want to create computer science 360 notes it's going to create a google doc for computer science 360 and then current time current date like before so this is pretty much the full application we have google login and google logout and we also have the ability for our users to use a certain google service in my example, it's Google Documents, but for whatever project you're creating, the process should be relatively similar. The only thing that's going to change is the actual API route you're kind of going to. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful in helping you guys understand how to set up Google OAuth specifically for React and also helping you guys understand how to make those API calls and then also handle the results of the API calls to do cool things like open up the document in a new page. All right, thanks for watching.